Hi, and welcome to the second edition of U.S. Energy Insights. I hope that everyone has had a fun and safe July 4th holiday. I am your host, Pamela Munger, and each month I'll be discussing the latest trends and market conditions within U.S. and global energy, sharing actionable insights powered by Vortex's tracking analytics. The two biggest questions since the beginning of the year have largely been, when will Chinese oil demand recover? And how big of an impact will recession-led factors have on energy demand? Will this year be a year of two halves, one bearish, the other bullish? Well, let's start with China first. If you look at this chart, you can see that Chinese oil demand reached peak levels in 2020, then dipped during the COVID years, and most importantly, largely recovered in the second half of 2022 to reach 2020 levels, or almost 2020 levels. Although emerging signs of weakness suggest that there could be a slowdown in the cards, it could be possible that the upside growth in China is tempered by poor economic conditions. There may be some further upside, but Chinese oil demand will not grow forever. Given an increasing maturity of the economy, an aging and declining population, as well as energy substitution and saving targets. China faces challenges of low demand, youth unemployment, and a weak real estate market. The last eight months have seen a strong post COVID recovery, probably including some overshooting based on stock builds and refinery margin dynamics and they have access to cheap crude. After all, we all love a bargain. Now let's explore the demand question. With rising interest rates and poor economic conditions, we expected refined product demand to take a hit. However, we can see that although refined product imports were not looking particularly strong so far this year, they're not quite as bad as expected. The Atlantic Basin in particular has held up fairly well in 2023, surpassing last year's import demand. And although the red line for America's West Coast is significantly lower year on year, this is largely due to unplanned turnarounds we observed in Pad 5 last year and historically high demand for power generation in Latin America. So in short, demand does not look as bad as we expected. If anything, what we're seeing is that the strong product supply pushing into markets is dragging down refining margins along the way. You can see an example of this in the chart focused on the east of Suez markets where growing refining capacity and exports are a growing source of bearishness weighing down margins in Asia and in Europe. Wider Arabian Sea clean product exports mixed with Russian diesel and other refined products has kept a lid on margins and even has led to announced refinery red cuts in the region. Now, if we take a look at energy exports by streams, we can see that they are largely dominated by crude and refined products. However, let's look at the dominant growth streams in purple and light blue. Since 2016, LNG exports represented by the purple color grew by 70%, while LPG exports in the light blue are also up by 40%. Meanwhile, crude and refined products are largely unchanged since 2016, underpinning a steady shift in demand substitution for these types of molecules over traditional refined products. U.S. exports are the main driver behind strong LNG and LPG export growth and cheap prices relative to liquids. Europe is a particularly impressive example of this substitution trend currently, albeit further factors play into it like lost Russian supplies. And here we see examples of relatively strong pockets of refined product demand, gasoline into the U.S. Atlantic coast. However, we expect this bright spot to largely disappear after the July 4th holiday and have already seen indications 
for lower gasoline exports into Pad 1 in our weekly data. Now, record diesel cracks early this year and late last year, we think are more of a reflection of supply concern rather than actual shortfalls. Europe was consistently well supplied for diesel, building diesel stocks over the last eight months on particularly high healthy import levels. With Europe phasing out Russian diesel imports, these barrels started to arrive in alternative markets only as of March. The European diesel import demand is largely met by east of Suez inflows. Countries like Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Turkey are importing a lot of Russian diesel, freeing up domestically produced barrels for exports. Now, Asian refiners are most likely to feel the pressure from the diesel rerouting to the east, along with other Russian clean product arrivals, namely NAFTA. Overall, these factors work together to produce a very bearish supply picture with unseasonably high world oil exports set to continue, and of course, global crude inventory building. That's all we have for today. Please let us know if you like this insight and feel free to suggest future topics in the comment section. Thanks again for watching.